good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Alpert, and I'm a financial counselor with the New York Legal Assistance Group. And this webinar is on ID theft and financial scam scams, advice on how to protect yourself and your assets. Uh, just a, a little bit of information about our organization on this slide. Uh, this workshop is specifically designed for our Kabad project. And if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box, and I'll answer them either as we go along or at the end of the uh, workshop. And there's also a hotline number, which you are welcome to call if you would like personal advice from a financial counselor. And that hotline number is 212-613-6589. All right. So today we're going to talk about uh, ID theft primarily, and if we have time, we will talk a little bit about financial scams that are out there and how to identify them and how to avoid them. This is our agenda. I'm going to try to keep this down to about 20 minutes or so. So what is ID theft? Well, ID theft is, uh, is a fraud. It's a crime. It is when somebody wrongfully obtains another person's personal information, and they typically use that for their own economic gain. Uh, the data that they're looking for could include your social security number, your bank accounts, your credit card accounts, and other financial information. And while it is mostly financial in scope, there are people who sometimes will use a stolen identity if they are arrested by the police. And they'll give that identity to the police, and uh, that could lead to, a, to uh, uh, problems with the criminal justice system as well. Once you're a victim of identity theft, it can be very emotionally and financially di difficult to overcome. It can be overcome, but it can be expensive, time-consuming, and very, very frustrating. The Justice Department reports that over 11 million U.S. citizens are victims of ID theft every year at the average cost of $4,900 per person. And that's been what's reported. How do you become a victim of identity theft? Well, typically, the, it's most often, uh, the most common probably is if you lose your purse or your wallet. Uh, but uh, it's, it's basically easy to become a victim. No one has to break into your home when they can look over the, your shoulder. One common scam that my own per personal family has been a victim of is when a uh, an optical camera is placed over an ATM machine uh, to, uh, which records the PIN number as you're pressing it in, and some type of card reader is placed over the uh, ATM card slot, and the uh, thieves have both your PIN number and your card number. There's also uh, what known as dumpster diving, where they could go through your trash. Uh, they could pretend to work for legitimate companies to convince you to give personal information. And this could come in the form of uh, phone, phone calls to you. Somebody might say that they're pre representing XYZ Insurance Company and uh, they're looking to update your account information. Or they could trick you by email, which is known as phishing, as well. And I didn't put it on the slide, but a growing uh, risk is uh, well, the loss of your phone, which might have a lot of important data on it, and particularly as phones become uh, utilized more and more for, as payment mechanisms. There's also hacking. Uh, we, we can't forget about hacking. Uh, you've read reports in the press that Target has been a victim of stolen, stolen tens of millions of accounts. Uh, information has been, have been stolen from Target and Home Depot. Even the government website, uh, government websites such as the Obamacare healthcare website have also been broken into. And information is sometimes sold in bulk over the internet. So there are lots of ways that your information can get stolen by thieves. And then what do they do? Well, most commonly, they're trying to steal your money. So you might see that uh, they use your debit card and your PIN money to take cash out of an ATM. They might use your credit card account to buy goods, uh, electronic goods or whatever, with your credit card. Uh, it's important to identify these losses at qu as quickly as possible. You'll have a much better chance of recovering your money if you report it to the merchant or the bank as soon as you see it happens. And the longer you wait, it will be the harder it will be to recover those uh, the stolen money. But uh, you, if you're a victim, you could see money leaving your bank account. You could see 
charges being put on your credit cards. You might uh, see that accounts, char new charge accounts are opened in your name that you never really opened yourself. Uh, you might uh, have utilities or cell phone accounts opened in your name. They might get medical treatment on your health insurance. And uh, a growing scam is people filing uh, fees, filing tax returns to get your refund before you do. So how can you tell if you're a victim of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of ID theft? Well, most people really don't know that they're victims of ID theft until they apply for and are denied for credit and they decide to figure out, well, why would I be denied for credit? Or they might see a check that bounces because they don't have enough money in their account. So it's, but it's important to, to keep on, on top of your accounts, to keep on top of your bank accounts and your credit cards to make sure that you can identify possible theft as quickly as possible. Uh, you might also, so you'll see strange charges appearing on your credit cards. You might see bills not arriving if the uh, address on your accounts have been changed. Uh, you might see that your credit card is denied. You go to a merchant and he says this credit card is over the limit or the bank wants to speak to you. Checks might bounce. If it's, if it's you know, if theft occurred a few months ago, the uh, creditor might already have turned over the account to a debt collector, and you might get a call from a debt collector for an account that you know nothing about. Uh, and uh, you could even, in, in severe cases, you might even find that uh, a creditor has a judgment against you that he took you to court and you didn't know about it, and he has a judgment against you, uh, and you have to get that clarified as well. Other signs, medical providers bill you for services that you never received. Uh, the IRS might notify you, you, that, you that more than one tax return has been filed in your name. Uh, this would typically happen when you e-file a return and it gets rejected because somebody else with your social security number has filed a return or somebody has filed a return and put your children, let's say, social security number down as dependent. They will get the credit for that if they were the first one to file and your tax return will be rejected. Uh, I mentioned Home Depot and Target, so if you get a notice in the mail that your information has been compromised, that's a pretty good sign. Uh, or if you are accused of a crime that somebody else committed in your name. This uh, webinar will deal mostly with financial issues. Now generally the earliest sign uh, that you're a victim of identity theft will be when you find money missing from your bank account or see unusual charges on your credit cards. But it's also a good idea to check your credit report periodically to see if there are accounts you don't recognize or in the worst case a judgment that you didn't know you had. Uh, so you're entitled to your credit report free every, three times a year, once every 12 months from each of the three credit bureaus, that's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And the easiest way to get that credit report is to go online to www.annualcreditreport.com. That's a government mandated website, FTC mandated, it's safe and it's free. You could also call the phone number on the slide, 877-322-8228, or you could send in for it. But the easiest and most and simplest way is to go to www.annualcreditreport.com. What do you do if you find out that, you may, that you're a victim of identity theft? Well, the first thing to do would be to... Uh, uh, if you find out that your wallet is missing, for example, you probably would want to call up your credit card issuers, report that you're, you've lost your card, so at least they can stop uh, charges being made on those cards. But uh, if, you're, if your information was taken, let's say, from a dumpster or for some other means and you don't really know that for sure that you've lost your card, it's really your responsibility to contact the uh, credit agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and notify them that you've been a victim of identity theft and put a fraud alert on your credit report. A fraud alert will help prevent thieves from opening up new accounts. You only have to call one of the three agencies and they will report it to the other two. There are two types of fraud alerts. First, there's the 90-day initially alert, and that's generally free. And then there's an extended alert, which can last up to seven years. But depending upon where you live, the uh, agencies may, may 
charge you a nominal fee to post a, to post a uh, fraud alert for longer than that period of time. And basically, nobody is no bank or uh, creditor will be allowed to open up an account in your name without first trying to contact you as well. You mentioned you, I mentioned you want to report the fraud to the departments of any banks or creditors where you may have credit. In other words, uh, if it happened at Macy's, you probably want to call Macy's. If you have a Macy's card, you also want to call the bank that issued the card. You should close accounts that you believe may are fraudulent or may have been com compromised, or at the very least, call up the institution and ask for a new account number. And then, unfortunately, and this is a little bit of, of a pain, but you need to file a report with your local the police department. So it's just a it's just a uh, unfortunate uh, fact of life that many creditors will not simply take your word for it. Uh, they want to know that you filed the police report. And this will be especially important if you've lost your debit card or if somebody has used your debit card number to take money out of your bank account. If you call the bank within a very, very quick period of time, a matter of days or a couple of weeks, you probably uh, they probably will refund your money. But if it goes back for a couple of months or longer, the bank isn't necessarily going to take your word for it. They will want to know that it's been reported to the police department. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for this that I won't go into, but uh, you need to go to the local police department and file a police report. And also, you, cre you create an identity theft affidavit with the Federal Trade Commission at www.consumer.fdc.gov. Those two items together, the police report and the identity identity theft affidavit David filed with the FDC constitute your identity theft report which you will then issue to the to the uh, reporting agencies and any creditors where you uh, uh, where you've had a problem I mentioned you may have to close your old accounts and open up new accounts if you've lost your social security number you probably or if somebody has used your social security number to steal your identity you'll want to call the social security department you may, if you've off your driver's license, you'll contact your state's uh, DMV. And if your passport's been lost or stolen, you'll need to contact the Department of State. And if you're, if you find yourself a victim of tax fraud, of tax fraud or a tax uh, theft, first of all, what most likely will happen is you're going to file your taxes, you're going to e-file your taxes, and you're going to find out that your tax return has been rejected, most likely because somebody else has either used your social security number or used the social security number of your dependents to claim your refund. And the IRS will have given that refund to the first person who files under your social security number. So now they see that somebody else has filed, you have filed, and, and it's going to be rejected. They are not going to tell you who else has filed using your social security number. The IRS does not do that. So you need to contact the IRS ID protection at the number shown on that report and possibly fill out an IRE, IRS ID theft affidavit form, and they will investigate. They will contact the person where they sent the refund and they will try to get to the bottom of who uh, who actually is owed the money, who is due the money. When you're dealing with this, make sure you keep a logbook, keep a notebook handy at your side so that you can uh, th that you can uh, keep a log, keep a record of all the correspondence you've made, uh, all the phone calls you've made, uh, the dates of these uh, actions, etc. Uh, may come help may be useful if you end up going to court later on I mentioned you're going to get the ID theft affidavit at the FTC website and you can also file a theft report with another regulatory agency called the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau but just keep records and keep logs of everything you do and everything you've done when you look at your credit report and you find mistakes it could be either a mistake in terms of your address, perhaps, and an employer. Uh, if it's a, an account that you don't recognize, an account that isn't yours, you're going to make a copy of the, uh, of the uh, credit report, circle the item that you're disputing, and write a letter to one of the agencies in terms of why you're disputing the, uh, the item. If it's simply a correction in the identity, you just may an a letter may be enough. But 
if you're saying that my credit report shows I owe XYZ Bank $2,500, I never had a credit card, I never had a loan from XYZ Bank, you're probably going to have to give some more supporting evidence, including the ID theft report that I mentioned, which would include both the police report and the ID theft affidavit. And you're going to do this for each incorrect or, or fraudulent item on your credit report. And I would do a separate letter for each item. I would not just say, here are six things on my credit report that are wrong. I would I'd want to do a separate letter for each item. So how to keep your, how to, to, to try to avoid getting in the, becoming a victim in the, uh, in the first place. And again, the, the thieves are getting more and more sophisticated all the time. But simply be careful about how you share your inf sensitive information. Uh, don't carry unnecessary papers in your purse or your wallet in case they are stolen. If you're, you just need an ID, you may not even need to carry your driver's license with you in case you lose your wallet. You could, you could carry some other form of ID. Uh, don't carry all your credit cards, especially if you don't, you know, if you're only going to use one or two, just, just carry one or two. But try to minimize the damage that could be done if your wallet is lost or stolen. Um, make a shredder. Buy a, buy a shredder at Costco or Walmart. Mart. They might be 25 or 30 bucks. And don't throw away, just, you know, don't throw away your bank account statements in the, in the garbage, especially in the recycling, unless they are shredded. But don't share or give out personal information. Beware, be, online theft, of course, is, is a growing problem as well. Uh, beware of phishing emails. What's a phishing email? A phishing email might be somebody, some thief reproduces a, um, a bank-like statement, a bank-like letter, let's say, that comes into your email. And it looks like it comes from Bank America. It looks like it comes from Citibank. Uh, it, it, it has their logo. But sometimes you read about it and words are misspelled, the language doesn't sound right, and it's just, and it might say, we need, your account may have been compromised, you must, you know, click this link and fill out this information as soon as possible. That could be a thief, most likely is. Then most banks will not ask you to click links, okay? They will send you an email to contact them, but they will not ask you to click links. Keep your password passwords private, use strong passwords, and be careful what you post on social networking sites, and, and make sure you talk to your kids about that as well. I'm going to talk just a few minutes on scams. I mentioned the phishing scam already. Uh, telemarketing is uh, when somebody calls you on at your home, you're eating dinner, and somebody calls and says you just want a, a two-week trip. Well, you, you won. You entered a, 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 some type of a, a, a promotion and you don't remember it, but you've won. Uh, computer hijacking, debt relief, and tax relief. Um, just spend a couple minutes on each one, a minute on each one. I've already talked about phishing a little bit. I said don't reply to email, text, or pop-up me messages that ask you personal information. Be careful about clicking on, in, on links. Legitimate businesses don't ask you to send information through insecure channels. If you're in doubt, go to the bank website itself. Telemarketing scams, I also mentioned you might get a phone call saying you've been selected especially for some type of promotion or bonus or you've won a valuable prize. Uh, they, might even, they might ask you to say, well, we just need your credit card number or we need your social security number and we'll get these papers filled out at to you and, and right away. Um, and then uh, actually I got a call the other day from somebody saying the person could barely speak English, but he was telling me that they had, that he was with Microsoft and they have detected that my computer has, has a very, very severe virus and all I have to do is turn over my remote desktop so he can control my computer and he's going to clean it up for me. Just follow his directions. So just be very careful about these things. There's a national do, call, uh, do not call registry, which can r limit the number of phone calls you will get from telemarketers. Uh, and uh, you could also go to do not call.gov 
and you can register a phone, you can register up to three telephone numbers at one time, but obviously this will not necessarily stop uh, thieves from calling you. Uh, computer hijackings where uh, somehow a virus does get downloaded to your computer and uh, all of a sudden you get a, the, the, de the deathly blue screen or some type of a, of a sign that will say you, to unlock your computer you must call us and pay $49, etc. Um, so make sure you have uh, strong virus protection firewalls on your computer. Debt relief scams, this is what you hear on the radio and TV. Uh, big banks were bailed out for, for their problems and now it's your turn. If you have more than $10,000 of credit card debt, call us immediately. You have, uh, in the next two hours, you have to call us and these are just scams. What they're going to do is ask you to send them money, not the credit, not the credit card companies, and that they'll settle your debt for pennies on the dollar, uh, but you'll probably never see that money again. And you won't get any debt relief either. And the same thing with back taxes. Uh, if, you, if you owe the IRS back taxes, talk to the IRS, okay? You may be able to get on an installment plan. You may be able to have an offer and compromise or you know, go to the tax prep, a legitimate tax prep company, talk to your accountant, but don't listen to, don't go to the uh, places that advertise on uh, TV or, or radio. Chances are they're just going to take money up front and they'll, if they get you on an installment plan or, or, or get an offer of compromise, it's nothing that you could not have done your own, your, on your own. There is a taxpayer advocate service that is sponsored by the IRS. The phone number is here, 877-777-4778, or go to irs.gov backslash advocate. And there's lots of good help on websites as well. Uh, FTC.gov, um, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, the IRS. And I hope that that is really all that I wanted to cover in the webinar. Uh, I don't see any questions here right now. So if anybody would like further information, please reach out to our hotline number at 212-613-6589. And thank you very much.